Woohoo! Look what I've made! Man, 3D printers are so cool. I would subscribe to my channel if I was you. Tada! This is my 3D printed gaming console. I designed the case myself. I'm especially happy with the way this red cover fits, held in place only with these corner inserts and no screws. What I have here is a laptop motherboard. These surround contraptions are the Wi Fi and Bluetooth antennas going to the Wi Fi card, power and bias switches, and the power cable. This is the same motherboard I was using in my DIY multimedia PC video, which, by the way, it's my most watched video, so thumbs up for that. And the whole thing thing is just held in place with hot glue, the engineer's best friend. And the cover fits so well and it just snaps into place. This is why I love 3D printing, from my mind to CAD design and then to reality. As you might have noticed, I put some rubber feet and those really keep the console from sliding around easily. And these buttons are so satisfyingly clicky. So let me show you how I built it. The hardest part was to make all the holes for the ports to fit. So I firstly designed that and as you'll see later I printed it a lot of times since the ports had trouble getting to fit in the holes. After I was satisfied with the cutouts positions I built the entire case around it making sure to have three holes in the front as well, one for a third USB port and two square ones for the power and BIOS buttons. Then it was printing time. And sweet baby Jesus, this print took a long time to complete. It was the longest print I have ever done. It feels like I can still hear the sound of the CR10. I need to silence it in a future video, so subscribe for that. As you can see, the painter's tape I put on the build surface has some gaps between the strips, which I was aware they will show on the bottom of the print and I was perfectly okay with it. Also, I was too lazy anyway to change it. And this being the largest surface area I ever printed, it was a pain to remove from the build plate. I actually had to remove the glass plate and put it under hot water to soften the adhesive of the tape. This is some weird stringing that happened and some of the supports for the holes were not well printed, but it was finally finished. Now it was time to design the lid. And I knew from the beginning I wanted it to be easily removable and have no screws. I came up with this design with a lot of hexagonal holes for cooling and also to gaze at the components inside and to have everything covered in dust as well. And these corner brackets are what keep the lid in place. When printing I decided to use the glue stick and to my surprise it worked so well at keeping the part stuck to the bed and most importantly left no marks on the print surface, since this will be a visible part. And I decided to print it in bright red to catch the eyes and to make everybody ask, what are those? As you can see, it seems that my bed is either warped or not properly leveled, but the part came out great anyway, so I don't care that much. This part took 7 hours and 25 minutes to print. And I have to repeat, I really have to silence the CR10 printer somehow because the noise is driving me nuts. Eventually I designed these tiny button covers for the momentary switches. This only took 3 minutes to print. So this is the result. I'm so pleased with how it turned out, especially in the back side, the one with the cutouts, even if you will not be able to ever see it. So look how many parts I have to print to make the ports fit. All of these are test pieces and for most of them I didn't even leave the printer to finish them. I just cancelled the print and checked the fitment, then modify the file in SolidWorks and then print it again. And this is how it looks with the red cover on. You have to admit it looks quite neat. Now let's put the motherboard inside and assemble everything together. It's time for the time lapse. Time.
perfectly centered. It's done! Man, look at this great fitment. All the ports are so easily accessible and even in the front the buttons are perfectly flush and they are so clicky. I am really digging this color combination and the design I've made. Look at this! I'm actually patting myself on the back right now with my third hand. Let's have a better look inside because I remember to add the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi antennas. These are just coiled and covered them with hot glue and used more hot glue to stick them to the case. Everything here looks so tidy and clean. Clean, clean, clean! And I've also printed the red buttons. These were stuck with just a small bit of hot glue right on top of the existing momentary switches. Let's put back the dog cover. Obsessed with hexagons! These rubber feet, which to be honest, I don't remember where I got them from, really make it look professional. So you might be wondering why I went to the trouble of installing the wireless card and the antennas. Just because my OCD made me, since I didn't want to be left with unused parts? Yes, but also because I will soon use Bluetooth controllers instead of wired. Because I hate wires. I hate wires more than I hate Austin Evans intro. Finally, this is how I'll connect it for now. Both controllers in the two USB ports from the back, HDMI, network and the power. Also, in the front USB port I connected the receiver for this multimedia keyboard with a trackpad. Since after all, this is a fully working computer. So this being said, please subscribe, it really boosts my motivation to make more videos. So let me know if you like it, give a video a thumbs up or not.